welcome back. The last class I have discussed a, a single bit uh, full adder and uh, we have realized using the static CMOS logic also, logic gates and mirrored logic gates where uh, the PMOS network is identical to that of uh, uh, NMOS network. Okay? And uh, in today's class, we are going to discuss about the uh, ripple carry adder. Okay? So, look at this diagram here. So, this is a data path adder. So, the figure A shows a, a full adder, it is a single bit a full adder. So, it is a single bit a full adder. So, you can see here the A and B are the inputs and sum is the output and this is the carry input C in okay? and there is a carry output C out. Okay? So, the figure B shows a, a 4 bit adder. Okay? So, 4 bit adder if you see here the this is the carry output of the first stage. This carry output is serving as the input to the next stage. Okay? So, this is So, this is the C in is initially connected to a VSS, the C in is initially connected to a VSS. Okay? So, the carry output of the first stage is serving as a carry input to the next stage. Okay? So, this is a 4 bit adder having a 4 bit sums and there are 2 outputs C out of 2 and C out of 3. Okay? So, the C out of 3 is the MSB and C out of 2 is nothing but MSB minus 1. Okay? So, look at this figure C. Okay? If you see the figure C, this is a layout using a 2 level metal. So, where the data will be there on your M1 and control lines will be there on your M2. And figure D shows the data path layout. Okay? So, when you see a ripple carry adder, so we are look at the example. So, this is an example of a 4 bit uh, ripple carry addition. I have taken here as A is equal to A is equal to 0, 0, 1, 1 and B is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay? So, I have substituted here. The green one indicates it is the 1 0 1 0. So, I have included here as 0 1 0 1. Okay? Least significant bit will be a B naught. Okay? So, this will be your a B naught and this will be your a B 3. Similarly, this is your A naught and this is your A 3. Okay? So, you can see here there is no initial carry. There is no initial carry. So, your C naught is 0. So, if you add now a naught plus B naught, what happens here? Your sum will be 0, right? And the carry will be 1. You can see in this diagram, this carry is propagated over here. So, this carry out is C out is serving as an input to the next stage. So, now your A1 is 1, B1 is 0, and your C in is 1. Initial, now, initial carry is 0 here. The C in 1, that is C in i plus 1 I can call the next stage. Okay? So, this will be 1. So, what we get now here is 1 plus 1 plus 0. So, the sum will be 0 and again carry will be 1. So, again this carry is propagated over here. Okay? Now, this carry output is serving as an input to this stage that is a third stage. So, we have 0, 1 and the carry in C in is also 1. So, we get sum is equal to 0. Okay? And carry will be equal to 1. So, this carry is again it is propagated over here. Now, if you see A3 and B3 both are 0 and your this C out is serving as an input to this stage that is the fourth stage. Okay? So, we get sum is equal to 1 whereas carry is equal to 0. Sum is equal to 1 whereas carry is equal to 0. So, you can see the answer we got S is equal to 1000 whereas C4 that is carry is equal to 0. Okay? So, this is an example of a 4 bit ripple carry addition. 
okay. So, the, the way we have discussed this diagram now, so this how it works, so this is how that, that is an example I have shown in the next slide. So, that is the example we have discussed it. But you can see here there are two outputs over here, whatever I have shown in that example one output C4, okay. So, that is nothing but this, okay. What is C out? It is MSB minus 1. So, these two signals we are connecting on XOR gate and XOR gate output is going to detect the arithmetic overflow. So, we will see in a, a future slide. Okay. So, this is the data path elements. So, this symbols for a data path adder you can see here this heavy line this indicates and also the notation it has shown like this no this indicates it is a bus. So, it is A MSB down to 0. So, if you uh, take MSB as a 3 down to 0 then it is a the uh, 4 bit adder. So, if you say it is uh, um, 7 down to 0, it is a 8 bit adder, okay. And sum is also will be indicated in a form of a bus, the sum also it is going to represent as MSB down to 0. So, the figure B is an alternate symbol, we can also uh, you know write the symbol in this fashion also. Here again the heavy line indicates it is a bus. Okay. So, it has A MSB down to 0, B MSB down to 0 and some MSB down to 0. Okay. So, the figure C is a symbol with the control lines. So, what are the control lines? See, these two are indicated A MSB down to 0 and B MSB down to 0 and S MSB down to 0 is indicated with heavy lines and these three are buses. Okay. So, C in of 0 and C out MSB and C out MSB minus 1 it is a light, it is not heavy, it is a light line we have indicated, okay. That C out of MSB and C out of MSB minus 1 and these two we are considering it as a control lines to detect the arithmetic overflow, okay. So, we are going to connect an XOR gate and the XOR gate output we are going to see. So, if it is a 0, 1 or 1, 0, if we get it, then there is a overflow. If you get both zeros or both 1s, in a C out of MSB and C out of MSB minus 1, then we overflow will be 0. So, that indicates that there is no overflow, okay. So, what is this? We will uh, take some example of signed and unsigned numbers, okay. So, yeah. So, what is the block diagram? It is, uh, okay, this is indicated with the heavy line. So, that you can consider it as a bus, okay. So, the, you, this is A and this is B and this is light line. So, this is C n is connected to V s s or 0 that is initial it is 0 and this is also two light lines. So, you get uh, here as uh, C out uh, M s B minus 1 and uh, C out M s B, okay. And the sum again it is indicated as a heavy line. So, that is bus that is S, okay. So, now is C n is equal to a V s s, C n is equal to V s s. So, now I will take the 4 bit as an example. So, I will add now with the first case as plus 7 and plus 2, okay. So, that is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, this is my C 3 and this is C naught, okay. So, 0, 0, 1, 0, okay. So, if you add it, okay. So, what we are going to get 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 will be 0 with the carry 1, okay. Then, then 1 plus 1 will be 0 with the uh, carry 1, okay. So, one minute. Okay, so it is, uh, this is 1, this is nothing but 0, this is 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 will be 0 with a carry 1, again 1 plus 1 will be 0 with a carry 1, okay, so you get here as 9. So, 7 plus 2, if you add it, you get an answer as 9. That means that you are 
C3 is nothing but your MSB minus 1 and C4 is nothing but MSB. So, in this case your C4 is 0, C4 is 0 and your C3 is 1, okay. So, if you give a XOR gate, okay, then you get the output as 1, that means there is an overflow, there is an overflow, so you get the output as 1, okay. So, similarly, if you take up the second case as, so plus 7 minus 2, so what is the answer you get as a plus 5, right. So, plus 7 you write it as it is, okay, then minus 2 you can uh, do with the 2's complement. So, 2's complement means 0, 0, 1, 0, take first as 1's complement, okay, and then if you add a plus 1, you get 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so 1 plus 1 will be 0, again 1 plus 0 will be 1 and again 1 plus this 1 as it is, this 1 as it is. So, you get 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so now you add it, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 will be 0 with the carry 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 will be 1 with the carry 1, okay, then 1 plus 1 will be 0 with the carry 1. So, this indicates, this indicates it is a C4 this indicates it is a C4, right. So, now you have a C4 is equal to 1, okay, what is my C4 is MSB and C3 is equal to 0, C3 is also equal to 0. So, this indicates what we are going to get, our answer will be in the true form, okay. So, you can discard the carry over here because your answer will be in the uh, true form, okay. You can discard the carry you, are, you can discard the carry because your answer will be in the uh, true form. So, you get as, you get here as 0, 1, 0, 1, that is the answer we got, you can discard this carry, okay. Now, you can take up the third case as it is minus 7 plus 2, minus 7 plus 2, you get the answer supposed to be at minus 5. So, again you have to uh, take the uh, the uh, two uh, complement. So, negative number 0, 1, 1, 1. So, first take 1's complement, then you can take the plus 1, you can add it. So, you get here as 1, 0, 0, 1. This 1, 0, 0, 1, you can add with this number that is 0, 0, 1, 0. So, you get here as 1, 1, 0, okay, then it is 1. So, your carry will not be there. So, the carry will not be there. So, carry will be 0. So, here it is C4 is equal to 0 whereas C3 is equal to 1. C4 is equal to 0 and C3 is equal to 1. You can see here, but since there is no carry and answer is also will be in the 2's complement form. The answer will also be in the 2's complement so, answer will also be in the 2's complement form. So, your answer will be in the 2's complement. Once again, you take a, a 1's complement, then if you add a plus 1, you get back the original answer. So, answer will be in the 2's complement form, okay. So, similarly, you can uh, take here as minus 7 and minus 2. So, what is minus 7 and minus 2? It is 9, okay. So, minus 7, minus 2, it is 9. So, what is minus 7? It is 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 because I have already taken that number and minus 2 is 1, 1, 1, 0, okay. So, you can see here 1, 1, 1, 0 and carry is generated here, okay. So, this is C4. So, this if you uh, connect to an XOR gate, okay. So, it is 0, 1 you got, no. So, 0, 1 you got that means your overflow signal will be 1. Okay, so, if you connect this to an XOR gate, overflow will be 1. So, what I can say that when both the positive numbers or both the negative numbers, okay, so if you give a both positive and both negative, then there is a overflow exist. For other two cases, you will not get the overflow because the answer will be either you get the uh, real answer with discarding the carry or your answer will be in the uh, 2's complement. A form, okay. So, here you can see here 0, 1, 1, 1. 
So, that again once again you can take uh, the uh, ones complement and then plus 1 if you add it you get the answer as 1 double 0 1 ok. So, here there is an overflow minus 7 minus 2 it is nothing but addition it is minus 9 again plus 7 plus 2 here also we get the uh, overflow as uh, 1 ok. So, this is an example to detect the arithmetic uh, overflow. So, next this is an conventional ripple carry adder. So, conventional ripple carry adder there are two in two methods we can realize the conventional uh, ripple carry adder. Let us see here. So, what is this GI? In yesterday's class uh, we have gone through that GI is nothing but a generate. So, we get AI into BI and PI is nothing but your propagate. So, it is AI plus AI plus it is a BI ok. AI plus BI and what is your carry signal CI? GI plus PI that is A X or B into CI minus 1 that is the previous stage and your sum is nothing but I can write it as A X or uh, B X or CI minus 1 or I can directly write it as uh, P X or C minus 1 ok. So, I can directly like uh, I can write like this way ok. So, now the conventional ripple carry adder you can see here the XOR gate what you are going to get here it is P i ok and this is your uh, G i because A i into B i is G i. So, this is P i because it is A i XOR uh, B i ok and now if P i XOR C i minus 1 I am going to uh, get this uh, sum expression that is what this ok and what about the carry you can see here this is a uh, P i and this is C i minus 1. So, here I get since it is a AND gate no here I get P i into C i minus 1. So, that will be added to G i and finally, I am going to get here as a C i ok. So, that means what I, the what I can say that your C i is nothing but what? C i is the carry out of stage i ok and this C i is serving as the carry input to the stage i plus 1. This is the stage i plus 1. So, I can write as C i is equal to ok. C out of i that is equal to that is equal to ok that is equal to C in i plus 1. C i is the carry out of stage i ok and is serving as a carry input to stage i plus 1. So, I can write C i is equal to C out of i that is equal to C in of i plus 1. Are you getting it? Now, you can see the second stage here. We can reduce the delay ok by adding a pairs of go faster bubbles to change AND and OR gates into NAND gates fast to input NAND gates. Okay, so, we can reduce the delay by using a pairs of go faster bubbles by changing this AND and this both are AND this is OR AND and OR gates into fast two input NAND gates ok. So, that is how it has realized here. So, wherever AND gate is there it is replaced with NAND and wherever OR is also there it is replaced by using De Morgan's theorem. So, this also can be converted into a NAND only ok. So, the carry signal can be generated in two ways that is this you know C i is equal to A i into B i plus P i into C i minus 1 this is what instead of G i they have written here as A i into a B i ok or the carry can also be generated in this way that is A i plus B i into P i bar this dash indicates it is a complement. So, P i bar P 
plus C i minus 1 where P i bar is nothing but not of P i ok, where P i bar is nothing but the not of a P i ok. So, we can see that it is A i plus a B i into P i plus C i minus 1, P i bar plus C i minus 1 ok. So, we can add the page. So, what is that uh, your carry C i? It is A i plus B i ok into your P i bar plus C i minus 1 right this is what we got ok it is nothing but the same. So, first is A i plus B i into your P i bar is nothing but it is P i is nothing but A x or B. So, this will become A x nor B that is all. So, it is A bar B bar plus C i minus 1 ok. So, you can just uh, uh, multiply this A i ok this is also will be A i B i and this is also A i bar B i bar ok. So, you get here uh, A uh, you can multiply this A i into A i into B i ok. So, then plus A i into uh, A i bar into uh, B i bar ok. Then plus uh, B i into uh, A i into B i ok plus it is uh, B i it is B i uh, into uh, it is A i bar into B i bar ok. So, plus uh, it is A i C i minus 1 plus it is uh, B i uh, C i minus 1. Okay, so, you can cancel these uh, two terms. So, it is nothing but this is A i B i only and this is nothing but uh, A i B i only ok and then you get here it is A i ok C i minus 1 then plus uh, B i into C i minus 1 ok. So, this uh, two terms it will be taken it as common it is A i B i plus ok A i into C i minus 1 plus B i into C i minus 1 ok. So, this is how finally, we get A B plus A C plus a B C ok. So, this is how we can uh, the carry can also be generated in this equation also ok. So, next is uh, the uh, method 2. See when you compare with method 1 and method 2, ok. So, when you compare this method 1 and method 2, you can see here in method 1, I have taken P i is equal to A i x or B i, ok. Whereas, in case of uh, the method 1, what is P i? P i is nothing but A i x or a B i ok. So, when you see in method 2 ok. So, your P i is nothing but A i plus a B i. So, in yesterday's class I have told the carry is nothing but your A B plus B C plus C A right. So, if you take here as a C as a common factor. So, A B plus C into A plus B. So, this A plus B if I consider it as uh, the P i ok. So, then my carry equation will be uh, G i into P i that is A plus B into C i minus 1 ok. So, if you see the method 1 ok, here I am assuming it as A x or B i. So, finally, I require only 1 XOR gate because we have already realized over here ok. So, we get only 1 XOR gate whereas, if you see the method 1 uh, the carry obviously, it is simplified area is simplified in a carry, but sum we need a 2 XOR gates to realize the sum we need 2 XOR gates because we want to do A i XOR B i then one more XOR gate is required to that that means that we require 2 XOR gates to realize the sum. Whereas, in the previous gate uh, the previous method 
we require only one XOR gate. Okay. So, now see the method 2. So, this is an alternative uh, method to realize the uh, ripple carry adder with the carry chain. Okay. The first method is this is a conventional adder whatever we have discussed this is a conventional adder you can see the uh, carry expression based on the carry expression we have realized this uh, circuit. Okay. If you see this uh, the method 2. Okay. So, this is an another way of uh, the realizing and uh, the ripple carry order this is an alternate uh, method okay. and uh, we have separated here as the odd stages and uh, the even stages odd stages and uh, even stages. So, let us see how uh, this is going to work over here. Okay. So, assuming here it is i is equal to 1. Okay. If you assume i is equal to 1. Okay. So, then in the second stage we are going to assume i is equal to 2. So, we will be deriving the equation for odd stages and the even stages. So, let us see in the next slide. Okay. So, assuming here it has i is equal to 1. So, i is equal to 1 means this will become c 2 of 0 right and this will become c 1 of 0 or any previous stage. I am assuming c 2 of 0 i is equal to 1. Here I am assuming i is equal to 2. So, if I assume i is equal to 2 then I will get it here as a 2 and b 2. Okay? A 2 and b 2 and then I am going to get here as C2 of 2 and C1 of 1. So, in the conventional ripple carry adder, if you see, we have in the conventional ripple carry adder, we have only one output that is Ci plus 1. Okay? But if you see the alternative uh, ripple carry adder, we have two outputs that is C out MSB minus 1 and C out MSB. So, these two it can be connected to an XOR gate to detect the arithmetic overflow. Okay. So, now for the odd stages what it is written the equation here is the C 3 i dash that means C 3 complement is nothing but P i into C 1 i minus 1 into C 2 i minus 1. Okay. So, you can see here this is C 2 i minus 1 and C 1 i minus 1. So, I will just uh, erase this because initially later I will substitute the value. Okay. So, now you can see here the what you are going to get here is pi, what you are going to get here is the pi right this is pi. So, pi into okay. so this is pi into c 2 i minus 1. So, my output here is my output here is pi into c 2 i minus 1 okay. into this is at the NAND gate side okay, into C 2 i minus 1. Okay. So, this is P i and this is C 2 i minus 1, P i into C 2 i minus 1. The output of your AND gate is P i into C 2 i minus 1 and the uh, C 1 i minus 1 is serving as the input to the NAND gate. Okay. So, one input will be P i into C 2 i minus 1, another input to the NAND gate will be C 1 into i minus 1. So, what is the output you are going to get? There is a bubble over here. That is why it is nothing but your C 3 complement. So, C 3 complement is nothing but P i into C 2 i minus 1 into C 1 i minus 1. Similarly, you can go for C 4 complement. So, C 4 complement if you see here, this is A i and this is B i. So, you will be NANDing it A i B i the whole bar. Okay. So, that is why the C 4 complement inputs are the A i into B i that is this. Okay. Now, what is C i? Here it is C i is there. Okay. So, this uh, C 3 complement and C 4 complement I will be considering it as C 4 i and C 3 i. So, you get here as C 4 i into C 3 i the whole complement. So, if you apply a De Morgan's theorem you get C 3 i complement and C 4 i complement. Okay. So, now that is for the first stage is over now that is odd stage is over now and even stage. So, even stage if you see here
Okay. So, E1 stage if you see here, so the NAND gate output, so this is we are using the NAND gates in every stages and this bold line indicates it is a, a fast string line. Okay. This fast string line using NAND gates is shown in the bold line here. Okay. So, this is nothing but your the C3 dash that is C3 complement. Okay. So, what you are going to get here as this is also a bubble is there that is nothing but here you are getting here as uh, what is that a C1 okay C1 of I complement okay. So, it is a C1 of I C1 of I complement that is this right. So, C1 of I complement. So, this is C1 of I complement ok. So, C, C1 of I complement what, what you are getting C1 of I complement see here you get at the output of this is the uh, what is this line it is going to give here as it is C3 of I minus 1. So, what is this line this line is indicates is C3 i minus 1 ok and what is this you are getting here it is a i plus 1 and b i plus 1. So, you are XORing it. So, you are XORing it. So, that is nothing but what you are going to get this I will be calling it as the p i p i ok. So, this is p i and this is nothing but this part this is what this line this is nothing but C4 I minus 1 that is this line that means this line. This line is C4 I minus 1, this one is P i and this is C3 I minus 1 ok and what you get from this OR gate? You get from this OR gate is nothing but the C2 of i is nothing but A i plus B i. So, this is A i plus B i, A i plus B i you get here as from the OR gate ok. So, this C3 i minus 1 into P i into C4 i minus 1 is what you are going to get here as C1 dash of i what you are getting here as C1 dash of i ok. So, this C1 dash of i ok I will be calling it as C1 i plus 1 and this one I will be calling it as C2 i plus 1 ok. So, suppose if I substitute a value as i is equal to uh, 1 then I get here as C2 of 2 here I am getting here as C1 of 2. So, this C1 of 2 is nothing but your MSB minus 1 and this C2 of 2 is nothing but your MSB ok. So, here if you substitute i is equal to 1 initially ok i is equal to 1 this will become uh, the C2 of 0 ok this will become the C1 of 0. So, here I will get it as a C4 of 1 and C3 of 1 I am going to get. So, here this will become C2 of 2 and C1 of 2. So, this is how we can also realize a ripple carry adder by using the odd and even stages ok and this bold line is a fast string line and is implemented with the uh, NAND gates. So, the next concept is uh, the carry save adder ok. So, instead of you know the uh, carry is propagated through each stage of a ripple carry adder we can go for a carry save adder, we can go for a, a carry save adder ok. So, you can see here, you can see here. So, S1 of i is nothing but your C in I will explain what it is and S2 of i is A1 XOR, A2 XOR, A3. So, everything uh, here it is written in terms of uh, i ok. So, I will just read as A1 XOR, A2 XOR, A3 and C out is nothing but A1 A2 ok and then it is A1 plus A2 into A3. So, this is of the form of your AB plus 
a plus b into c this is of the form of a b plus okay this is of the form of okay how it is there this is of the form of a b plus a plus b into c it is looking like a complement wait so so it is a b plus a plus b into c okay so you can see here the uh, one bit uh, adder cell okay so a1 a2 a3 are the inputs s1 and s2 are the outputs both are in a form of a bus okay and the c in is the carry input that is connected directly to the s1 bus you can see this line you can see this line c in is the carry input that is directly connected to the s1 bus and c out is the carry output so this is how one bit carry save adder cell looks okay and now the figure b shows the four bit uh, carry save adder okay so you can see here initially carry input is zero if you see a four bit carry save adder there are two outputs c out msb and c out msb minus 1 so i have already said these two are the control lines that is required to detect the arithmetic overflow by connecting an xor gate to these two uh, uh, these two is serving as a input to the xor gate and the output of the xor gate uh, we can see that whether there is a overflow or a not okay so in a carry save adder the carry is saved in each stage in a carry save see this carry saved this carry saved this carry saved this carry saved in a carry save adder the carry is saved in each stage okay the carry is saved in each stage so there is no propagation in the carry save adder the carry is not propagated here so the delay of the carry save adder is also constant there is no propagation so the delay of the carry save adder is also constant are you getting it so now the figure c shows in a form of a bus okay so i have already told it is a1 a2 a3 are buses and it is indicated as a heavy line okay and s1 and s2 are the buses that is also indicated as a heavy line and there are two outputs that is control lines that is connected to an xor gate to indicate the uh, arithmetic uh, overflow okay now look at this a uh, figure d okay so we can use a carry save adder to add multiple inputs okay so this a uh, figure it is a adder with four bit inputs you can see here initially your carry save adder is having only three inputs okay but here there are four inputs are there so we can use a carry save adder to add the multiple inputs okay so if you see here and the two sum buses are given to the carry propagate adder whatever we are getting here no the output here the two sum buses are given as an input to the carry propagate adder here the carry propagate adder is nothing but your ripple carry adder only so we can use any type of adder but here they have used here as the ripple carry adder okay so now if you see this figure c here your final result your s1 contains what all the saved carries right s1 contains all the saved carries s2 bus contains all the sums so to get a n bit result we have to add these two we have to add this two okay then it will become a final output of your carry save adder so in figure c it is not shown okay to get a n bit results we have to add the s1 bus that contains all the carries and s2 bus 
that contains all the sums ok to then that will be your final output of your a carry save adder ok. So, here that is what this ripple carry adder whatever you are getting two buses over here the two buses it is sums by using a ripple carry adder that is work like a carry propagate adder that is what it has shown in ok. So, now if you see the figure E if you see the figure E the two CSA cells are abut together with RCA cell the two CSA cells are abut together with the RCA cell ok to horizontally to form a bit slice and later these are stacked vertically to form the data bath ok. So, you can see here the two carry save adder cells and RCA cells are abut together horizontally your sum is the C out and sum are complemented each other that means whenever your C out is 0 sum will be 1 see here C out is 0 sum will be 1 C out is 0 sum will be 1 C out is 1 sum will be 0 exactly opposite both sum and carry outputs are complements each other leaving the first row and the last row leaving the first row and the last row you can see here it is complement you can see here it is complement 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 and complement. So, I can write the sum expression as a plus b plus c into c out bar ok. Now, plus a b c also have written right plus a b c is nothing but for this combination a into b into c a into b into c a into b into c and a into b into c ok. So, that is why I can write the sum expression as a b c for the considering the first row and the last row for the remaining rows it is a plus b plus c into c out bar. Now, look at this uh, circuit diagram here ok. So, I have also mentioned the signals related to C in this is nothing but the propagate P is nothing but your propagate. So, what is propagate here what is propagate that is nothing but C into A plus B C into A plus B A plus B is nothing but your propagate A plus B is nothing but your propagate C here C is equal to I can write it as A B plus P into C in. What is my P? My P is nothing but A plus B. My P is nothing but A plus B. Okay. So, now you can see this is the kill function. This part is referred as a kill function. Similarly, this part is referred as a generate function. Look at this uh, circuit diagram. Your PMOS network is identical to that of your NMOS network. It does not work with conduction complements. It does not work with conduction complements. Your PMOS network is identical to that of your NMOS network. You can see here that is why this is also called as mirrored full adder. It is also called as mirrored full adder. You can see here A and B is in parallel, ok, and then that is in series with C. Here also A and B is in parallel in series with the C. Okay. So, here it is A B, here also it is A B, here A plus B plus C into C out bar into A B C. Here the sum is realized as A plus B plus C plus into C out bar plus A B C. A plus B plus C into C out bar plus A B C, but the carry as a B plus C into A plus B, A B plus C into A plus B. Are you getting it? Okay. So, now we will uh, take up uh, one case how it is going to work the same case only we will take. So, I will just erase this.
Okay. Now, let us take up the case as uh, A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 1 and C is also equal to 1. Okay. So, the PMOS network is identical to that of a NMOS network and it does not work with conduction complement and it reduces the number of series transistors. Okay. It reduces the number of series transistors and make uh, the layout more uniform and make the layout more uniform. So, this circuit diagram it requires only 28 transistors whereas, in case of our previous we have designed using a static CMOS logic gates it consumes 32 transistors. Okay. So, now we will see with this uh, case. So, when A is 0 and B is 1 and C is 1. So, this is uh, this transistor is on whereas, this is a PMOS this is off A is 0 this is on this is off okay. and then if you see here B is 1. Okay. So, this is on and it is what is that uh, the uh, which is this A, A is 0. So, this is off and B is 1 this is turned on. Okay. Similarly, if you see uh, A 0 it is on whereas, B 1 it is off and here it is A will be this. So, A will be 0. So, this is off and this is on okay. and we can just fill the whichever transistor is turned on or turned off we will see. Now, this is A. So, this is on whereas, B and C will be off. Okay. Similarly, uh, A is on okay, and B and C will be off. So, here it is A is off whereas, B and C will be uh, turned on, but here it is uh, this, this signal let me track the signal. So, this is B, this is on and uh, this signal is C, this is also on whereas, this signal is A, so this is off. Okay. So, finally, we get the output here as C out and sum. Okay. So, we will see now uh, because here if you see here uh, the since your uh, C uh, the transistor that is a C input transistor it is off the series path it is not going to exist over here. So, anyway this transistor is already in off state here also the series path is not going to exist, but when you see here there is a series path exist. So, finally, what is the output we are getting here is we get the C out bar as 0, we get the C out bar as 0. Okay. So, now this C out bar is serving as a input. So, to the inverter as well as you get the final output as 1. Okay. So, what is the output we supposed to get? For 0, 1, 1 combination, for 0, 1, 1 combination, uh, we get sum is equal to 0 and C out, C out is equal to 1, sum is equal to 0 and C out is equal to 1, sum is equal to 0 and C out is equal to 1. So, now we got the carry output as 1, we got the carry output as 1. Now, look at this sum now. Since this transistor is turned on, now we are giving a input as 0 that means this PMOS transistor is also turned on, this PMOS transistor will be off, this two is already in the off state, we get the output as, we get the output as logic 1, we get the output as logic 1 and this logic 1 is given to the inverter, finally we get the sum as 0. Finally, we get the sum as 0. Okay. So, this is how we can realize a, a full ladder using only 28 uh, transistors. So, next we go in depth to the uh, data path uh, logic cells. Okay. So, I will just give a brief introduction about uh, this uh, ripple uh, carry adder. So, you can see here there are the uh, this is a 4 bit uh, ripple carry adder. So, there is a input uh, C in. See how the ripple carry adder is going to work, how the ripple carry see the P 
previous carry output is serving as a input to the next stage. This is a carry output that is serving as a carry input to the next stage. Again the previous carry output is serving as a input to the carry out to the next stage. So, we get this is a final C out. This CO2 is nothing but MSB minus 1. So, this is your MSB minus 1, whereas CO3 will be MSB. So, there are two output signals, and this output signal we can connect it, we can connect to the XOR gate. So, to check the arithmetic overflow. Okay? So, this logic block, how it looks, there are two inputs A and B, and there is a carry input called a C in. And there are two outputs called sum and C out and one more output is nothing but your MSB minus 1. Okay? And look at this uh, diagram here the uh, what is this uh, the it uses a two level metal. Okay? The data will be there on the metal 1 and control lines will be there on the metal 2. It uses a two level metal, data will be there on the metal 1 and uh, control lines will be there on the uh, metal uh, 2. Okay. So, this is a structure of a, the 4 bit uh, ripple carry uh, adder. So, in detail we will discuss in uh, next class. Thank you.